boasting the new Twin Peaks logo of Mahindra because the Scorpio N was only launched during 2023 and in fact is a semi-finalist in the 2024 SA Car of the Year. Now, I was on the launch of the Scorpio N, I've had one on test before, but this was an extended test over the holiday period to give me a chance to really experience the 4x4 SUV in the range. It's big, it's bold, it's chunky. It's certainly modernized over the previous Scorpio version and looks so much better in my book. You can see the nice LED headlights. It's the daytime running. It's, it's got everything you expect on a modern vehicle these days. And of course, you've got the body cladding and everything else for 4x4. And notice, of course, the clearance on the wheel arches even to give you the 4x4 ability. This is the top AX7 model. And that means it gives you a lot of extra spec. So, for example, you've got the alloy wheels over here, 18 inches. They look good, they look the part, and they're capable as well. Now, you do get four models in the range, all powered by the same 2.2-litre four-cylinder M-Hawk diesel engine, putting out 129 kilowatts, 400 newton meters of torque through a six-speed automatic gearbox, selectable two- or four-wheel drive with four-wheel low available as well at the twist of a knob twist of a dial on the center console it's features like that that make you know that this is capable of four by fouring but it's also a nice big family vehicle you have a look over here i'll open the back door for you i'll climb in i would have liked running boards on a vehicle like this but that's because probably of my being slightly shorter but driver's seat set for me Plenty of legroom, headroom is very good, and you get features like vents in the rear with a fan control for the aircon system and a USB-C in the back. Mahindra may be more than one USB for the rear if you want seven passengers or up to seven in a vehicle. Two in front, one in the back. I would like at least one more, but I'm really being picky. You do get the nice leather upholstery in this version and, as Mahindra call it, the coffee colour. The two-tone over here. It looks very smart, looks very neat and you can see plenty, plenty of space in the back over here. You come around to the rear of the vehicle and let's take a look over here. Interestingly, the rear tailgate is side hinged on the Scorpio. Well, yeah. That's how they do it, no complaints about it. Of course, one of the things of seven seaters is it's about a ten, one tenth Allen boot if you want it in seven seater mode. So like any other vehicle in this category, not any different to the others, you get no boot space in seven seat mode. Just got to allow for that. The rear seat is a single piece not split like a lot of others and let's have a look how it works you do that and then you do I have to keep looking for this there it is over there you do that and it flips forward now this suddenly becomes at least a two Allen boot and in fact if you want to pack me on top of each other it's probably a four Allen boot because look at the height you get over there really is a lot of extra height and that does make a difference we loaded luggage for the family in the vehicle you saw a short on it piled it up to the top and we could get luggage for five for a two-week holiday in the back it says a lot something i did notice on this i've got to point out to you that gave me heart failure more than once is the seat doesn't fold into the floor like many others okay we'll live with that but pulling away on a very steep uphill this is not, it has got a little strap to anchor it to the headrest over there, but it's not the most effective locking mechanism. And on two occasions, as I pulled off, it suddenly went like that. And I thought I'd hit something, quite honestly, and almost had heart failure. But you live with a vehicle, you get to know the vehicle, and I suppose that's the kind of thing that can happen along the way. But I've got to tell you that the six-speed auto is smooth, it's comfortable, makes for relaxed driving. What Mahindra have done to separate the Scorpio N from the XUV 700, which is their 
on-road SUV as opposed to their 4x4 is this one's only available with a diesel engine whereas of course the XUV700 in South Africa only comes with petrol. Well, again, choices you want to make up to you. But only the top two models in the range come with the for Explore, as Mahindra call it, their all-wheel drive or their four selectable four-wheel drive. Otherwise, the bottom two are rear-wheel drive only. But there's spec differences as well. So it's an interesting choice once you've decided on the Scorpio N which model in the range you'd want. I must be honest, at the money, I would definitely go right up to the top. But it's always up to you. Hello, my name is Michael. I'm the owner of Change Cars and the host of the TV show All Things Motoring. I have one mission and that is to make a difference to the motoring public. Making a difference how? Making sure that you have safe options, making sure that you have knowledge. In that regard, it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to work with Alan Rosenmeyer of Motor Matters. The man with a hat, I'm the man with no hat, he's the man with the knowledge. Thank you for watching. Access to the third row is always an important function and factor on all vehicles of this sort. So how does it work on the Scorpio N? The seat is split two thirds, one third, and interestingly, it's only the one piece on the left hand side that does this. But look here, you flip the lever, flip it, and kaboom. And there you go, and that gives you the access. Okay, so now I'm in the cheap seats. Well, first point, lots of headroom. I'm very happy with that. And legroom, I've left that seat out the way there so you can see the legroom is actually reasonable as well. Kids, teenagers, not quite sure about adults, but certainly kids or teenagers could be pretty comfortable back here. And you've even got speakers up top for the sound system as well. So that's a nice feature to have too. So there you go if you want to transport seven in the Scorpio N. Out on an evening cruise in the Scorpio N and I've got to tell you that although this is the off-road, the 4x4, it is smooth, it is comfortable. The power, the 129 kilowatts, is more than enough for a freeway cruise and the six-speed auto box is smooth, it's comfortable, it's, it's just really a pleasant place to be. And although the XUV700 is the more comfort luxury orientated version, this one gives you that advantage of the four wheel drive, the switchable, selectable, two high, four high, and four low. And the weather we've been having, let me tell you, with the rain and the storms we've been having the last day or two, maybe, maybe, I may have even used four wheel drive as a safety factor not as an off-road factor. Of course, load shedding means the lights are out on the highway right now. The headlights are more than adequate. I can't put high beams on because there is traffic around me, but I'm quite comfortable with what I can see and the power and visibility created by these headlights on a dark road. So that's also an important factor to take into account and it's something that you don't always really get the chance to experience. So the positivity of load shedding for once it gives me the time and the opportunity to actually experience how decent the headlights are on the car and that's very very important now i've averaged sort of 10.3 10.4 kilometers per liter which is about 8.8 .8 liters per hundred but i can tell you that on one freeway run i got an over 13 kilometers per liter which is sort of in the sevens and that's not bad for a big bulky quite heavy and slabby vehicle like this one is so again that tells you that it's more than comfortable more than adequate and of course the diesel power works for it i'm sitting at 120 on the highway right now and it really is a nice place to be commanding high driving position overall i just really enjoy this i have to tell you that much The lovely thing about a 4x4 capable vehicle or a 4x4 vehicle is look at the mirror over the, the cam reverse camera over there that I've got and if I press this button 
I can change camera views now. I've got the front view. You can see what I can do and it's quite nice. I can change. Look at that camera view over there. You see these different views I can play with. So it's got the camera facility again to help you with off-roading, which is very, very useful. And now we just come to a little spot and it's certainly not 4 by 4 ing but let's just have a look and see and you'll see how smooth comfortable capable this vehicle actually is because let's just go through here and have a look it's certainly not as I said 4 by 4 ing but it's a bit rough and bumpy and whatever and the secret is take it slow and easy and I don't think anybody in the vehicle could have complained about getting over that little bit of rocks and lumps and bumps, could they? And then, of course, on the road, you can feel the acceleration is excellent. The power delivery, I find, always very, very good. Hopefully, this car won't turn in front of me. And it just is a really comfortable, smooth car to live with. And that's what's impressed me for over a month now that this really is a vehicle that I'd love to live with myself on a longer term basis even than just a month. I've got to tell you that much. And you'll see now a slight uphill stretch. Starting off behind the wheel as we always do, the instrumentation is clear it's easy it's simple and of course you can scroll through you know what it's about I'm not going to waste too much time you can see average fuel consumption well it's fluctuated between 11 and 13 or 14 kilometers to the liter which is pretty good so it's between seven and nine liters per hundred that we've managed to get out of the vehicle depending on what and where I can tell you now you're going to in everyday use if you use it urban and whatever you're going to get about eight and a half to nine liters per hundred which is quite fair on a vehicle like this as far as I'm concerned on your multifunction steering wheel of course you've got cruise control you expect things like that and all your controls over there it's all exactly what you expect from a vehicle like this you come across to the center over here of course now to the screen and you have a look and it's a pretty pretty useful screen quite nice it gives you everything you want I'm again not going to waste too much time got to tell you Android Auto using a cable connected perfectly quickly every single time really enjoyed it but you've got all your different functions and you know how it works I think I don't have to show you too much you know all of these things they're nice and easy and you've got some buttons over there as well your dual zone climate control works really really well and over here for example you've got buttons over here for that one I've try to remember to use every single time to switch out is of course the stop start function which drives me completely insane I really hate them on most cars so let's just leave it at that hill descent control over there really important below it over here two USBs at the front and you have got an inductive charging pad over there on Z8L so keep that in mind too as I said I've been using Android Auto using a cable I just find it so much better it works so much better as well the six-speed automatic gearbox it's a torque converter it's very standard works nicely really I've got just no complaints about it smooth comfortable easy and over here is of course again the 4x4 so that's your terrain over there so you've got normal you've got rocky you've got sand etc and over there you've got four-wheel high four-wheel low or the default in two-wheel drive as it's been for this whole test hmm manual handbrake again no complaints about that and you can see I mentioned the two-tone leather upholstery and everything else the two-tone even on the dashboard across here as well and Z8L also just to tell you I didn't mention does give you the upgraded Sony sound system with extra speakers etc etc for a much much better sound system Z8L also gives you a standard standard sunroof as standard spec as well now of course I mentioned the 2.2 liter engine 129 kilowatts 400 Newton meters smooth comfortable it is more than enough overtaking on the freeway anything you want it's never felt like it was lacking as far as I'm concerned in my four and a half weeks with the vehicle it just really has done the job and done it well and I've been 
constantly surprised at how smooth it's been and how comfortable it's been considering this is the off-roader version. Now, it's an interesting situation what they've done with the model range over here because they start at 480,000 Rand for the bottom model, can I call it, two-wheel drive. And then you go up to 570,000 for the lowest spec for Explore, as they call the four-wheel drive, or 605 for the one with it all. Now, that's a bit of a price range. And my conundrum normally is, do you need the four-wheel drive or don't you? Besides off-roading, I like four-wheel or all-wheel drive for the safety function it adds to a vehicle on wet roads, in bad conditions, etc., etc. And I like that extra function, the extra safety. But the other thing is, you can't get a two-wheel drive with quite the spec level that this one's got. So you do have to go to the top one if you want all the spec like we've got here. But it is so price competitive and I'm struggling that I don't think there's any other seven-seater off-road capable at this kind of money in South Africa at the moment. So that's something only you can decide for yourself. But I tell you now, I would certainly, certainly take this for a test drive. For Matters, I'm Alan R. See you next time.